Hi guys, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna do a brand new guide for Diablo 4. They have a new version on Steam, so we're gonna start optimizing Windows, and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're gonna search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance, and you're gonna make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divided by two, so for me it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're gonna make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, for the display, I really recommend to use the full screen one, the, the, the window uh, alone, causing some random stuttering and stuff like that. So go with the full screen. Make sure that you have your proper adapter, so your GPU. I know some folks are playing on a, a, a laptop, so you don't want to integrate video card over there if you have a dedicated GPU in it. So make sure that you have that. After that, uh, HDR, don't really need it. I'm not using vertical sync. Uh, if you don't like uh, tiering, you can definitely use that. Also, you can use other technology like FreeSync or G-Sync, but you can't use the vertical sync if you're running the frame generation from NVIDIA. After that, we're going to go to resolution scaling. Over there, you have a couple of technology. If you have an RTX card, I really recommend to use the DLSS. And also, make sure that you're using the quality mode. Honestly, balance performance and ultra performance are very blurry. So my recommendation is go with quality. And you can expect 15% boost in your FPS. If you have a Radeon card, go with FSR2. Don't use the one. Uh, and it's pretty much the same thing. Use the quality one. And you can expect a nice uh, 10 to 12% boost in your FPS at quality. And uh, it's doing the job. It's it's a little bit more blurry than the DLSS, but it's still very uh, effective. Uh, after that, make sure that you're uh, selecting your sharpened image. So really depend on your preference. It doesn't affect your FPS. So if you feel that your game is a little bit blurry with DLSS, just add a little bit more sharpen. If you have a 4000 series RTX card from NVIDIA, I really recommend to use the frame generation. You can expect 40 to 50% boost with that. So it's pretty huge. Honestly, if you have the option, use it. Uh, for the FPS, you can limit it if you want. I don't limit my FPS. It's more like if you have terminal issues and uh, for example, you have a 60 Hertz monitor, don't go too crazy if you're playing on a laptop uh, because you can have like some stuttering because of that. After that, in the quality, uh, texture, it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have. Honestly, if you have like 6 gig and more of VRAM, normally you can run Ultra and 16. If you have less than that, go high at 8x. And if you have something like 4 gig, go with medium and 4x. And if you have less than 4 gig, go with 2x and low. For the shadow quality, this one is pretty huge. If you compare IS to low, you can expect a nice 15% boost, so a lot of FPS. Uncheck the dynamic shadows and the soft shadows, another 6% FPS boost over there. Shadow quality, I recommend to go with medium. It's a good balance between like high and low. At medium, you will have like an improvement of 4% uh, percent in your FPS, but at high, uh, it will tank your performance, so I don't recommend to use that. Ambient occlusion, I recommend to go low or medium. Really depend on where you are with the guide and how many FPS that you have. Honestly, if you remove the ambient occlusion, yes, you will gain a lot of FPS, but the game looks very flat. So my recommendation is start at low and look at your FPS. If I compare high to low, you can expect 6% boost in your FPS. Fall quality, I recommend to go with low. Uh, it will uh, give you a lot of FPS. If you compare high to low, you can expect 9% boost here. So pretty huge. Clutter quality, I recommend to go with medium. 
and a fuel quality level also. Uh, not a huge boost when you go at low or off, honestly, and pre pretty much the same thing with fuel quality here at low. So uh, if you want to keep a nice, stable Im uh, image and a good uh, visual quality, go with medium. Water simulation quality, go with low over there. You can expect a nice 3% boost in your FPS. I don't recommend to go with I went NTL easing. The game looks very blurry. Uh, so don't use that. Put it at low. Geometric complexity, you can run, uh, honestly, high or medium. Do some testing. It's like 1% to 2% for each bracket. So not a huge deal. Terrain geometry detail, same thing. You can definitely test high. I didn't see a huge difference between low and high. Again, make sure that you're doing your testing, but normally you should have 2% different uh, for both. And for the rest of the, the option, it's it's pretty huge. Honestly, all the particle physics reflection, it tanks a lot to your performance. Go with low. Uh, you will have like a 10% boost in your FPS with all of the, those, but uh, it's more to stabilize your FPS. You will not be getting some random drop like 40, 50 FPS when you're fighting. So my recommendation is go with those settings distortion make sure that it's unchecked and if you really need it go with low fx check that you can expect another five percent boost in your fps so this is pretty much it guys for my diablo 4 steam edition it's pretty much the same parameter that uh, the one from battle.net so uh, if you have any question about it, just comment in the YouTube section, post me any question, uh, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.